Okay, we're live. I'm going to check my audio. Because <laughs> as you know, sometimes I don't pay attention to my audio and it gets bad. And I don't know it until I listen to it. But welcome to Wire Wednesday number 30. I can't believe it's number 30 already. Um, I'm a little behind my goal, my New Year's resolution for 2018, which was to do one every Wednesday. But life happens. I run my own lab. Then... I can't do one every week. I was going to try to do 52 of them, but I'm at 30, and we're in November, so that's good. And it is uh, the day before Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to all those in America and all those out of America, too. So anyway, uh, again, welcome to Wire Wednesday. Today I'm discussing uh, doing acrylic on a 3D printed model. Now, everybody has their own version of how to do acrylic on a 3d printed model some some don't even deal with it you know they will print the model duplicate it into plaster and then do that way it can just run right through the their their acrylic department without changing a thing which has its own benefits and but the drawback of you got to duplicate it so Many of you know I'm new to 3D printing, and so I'm dealing with this and working with this and trying to figure things out, making mistakes along the way. So I am going to try to give away some tips that I've learned, and maybe uh, if y'all have some tips, you know, share them in the comments below. And uh, and this is a big community; we'll work together. But I'll, I'll show you what I've come up with, and then you can kind of tell me if you like it or not. Oh, hello, Maria. How are you doing? I'm your new fan. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're <laughs> watching the live stream. Uh, and, and if you don't know yet, I'm not very good at this, but I'm doing it anyway. Uh, but like I said, today, I'm when I got into 3D printing, I wanted to come up with a method with a system where once it was printed, I could produce the acrylic on the model. So that that was the problem to solve and so I did a lot of research and thank you to YouTube people and Facebook groups that I've figured it out so I'm going to try to jot some notes down here uh, so as you come aboard and watch the live stream everybody will be on the board so my printer is a form 2 and the resin I use is form gray just the basic form gray so as I talk I'll, I'll try to make notes so that they're always on the table as I'm doing the live stream um, and I also have some notes here to make sure I don't miss any points hello Fabio Brazil nice what time is it there in Brazil it's yeah, anyway uh, so when I got into the 3D printing, and again, I'm using the Form 2 with the Form Gray resin, um, I want it to be able to run it through my acrylics, my wire bending and my acrylic without changing anything. Of course, it's always going to, new technology is always disruptive. It's always going to change. It's got some great benefits, 3D printing, but it's got some drawbacks. Number one being the resin that actually says from gray so that's form gray resin okay form gray resin it's most 3d printing resins are methyl methacrylate based meaning the acrylic and the resin are sister compounds so they like to bond to each other they uh, will form a bond so you've got to have a good separator um, I'm not gonna tell you what I use you use your separator that you use separator your choice research it find the best one you'd like to use but follow instructions to the letter now one of the things 
that uh, Paraguay. Wow. Where do you live? I live in Italy. So we got Brazil, we got Paraguay, and we got Italy. Awesome. Well, happy Thanksgiving. I know y'all probably don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but tomorrow's Thanksgiving here in America, and we're going to eat a big turkey dinner and everything. So um, I, I wish y'all the best in y'all's countries too. Um, but back to what we're talking about. And make sure you follow the instructions. Now, one thing I've learned in the Facebook groups, uh, in the president of the Association of Orthodontic uh, Association of Orthodontic Laboratory Professionals, which is a new or organization, the president is Christopher Gajewski, if I'm saying that right. And uh, I think he made a good point. He said he thinks a lot of the separation issues we have with 3D printed models is curing issues. And one thing I found out is that the Form 2 when it cures it's only 60 percent cured coming out of the printer so you got to finish curing it so i bought a form 2 a form wash and a form cure and y'all can look those up i'll put try to put links below but the wash just makes it easier to wash it make sure all the extra resin is off of the model because when, when it comes off it's dripping and so you got to wash it and then you put it in a ultraviolet light and heat the form cure cures it the recommended is 30 minutes i go a full hour the the full cure i want this thing fully cured and i think that helps out a lot with separation of these models now my this specific model is a four to four which are also the bicuspids four to four labial labial bow this doctor likes this labial bow which is great but it's caused problems when I've come to 3d printing because it does not like it, it I'll go ahead and tell you you know you have separation issues in here on the palate but when you add labial acrylic it, it they fight against each other you loosen it here it's still attached here it's it's you loosen it here, it's still attached here. It's hard to get them both off at once. And what I've been running into is the acrylic is cracking. Maria, you're yeah, you're Italian, 17 years old. Excellent. I'm glad you're, hopefully you're getting uh, a good education with this. Maybe it's something you want to do with your, with your life in the future. It's a really great uh, industry to get into. But what I was saying before is I get cracking here and here. And it's very frustrating to when I go to pull it off and I can see that thing cracking. So um, this doctor likes the 4 to 4 labial bow with with labial acrylic. Right? So that caused a problem. So this is what it looks like. This is an unfinished case. I haven't polished it yet. And I haven't cleaned up the model, but you can see my wax that's on here. Uh, but this is the labial acrylic that this doctor likes. Nice and thick. And he likes to completely encase the acrylic front and back with, with uh, sorry, encase the tooth front and back with acrylic. So that it will retain that tooth. It won't wiggle around. Now when you do just a wire like this, it will still retain the tooth, but... It, an extra level of retention is um, is acrylic on here, totally hugging the tooth. So the issues with sprinkling directly on the model is, you know, acrylic sticks to the resin, and it needs to be fully cured. Um, the model gives no room when you go to separate this to. Um, it doesn't give so when you separate you're going to break the retainer first or the the acrylic first oh wow how'd that happen you know, the acrylic first before the model breaks so here's an example here's one i just sprinkled and just separated and you can see i've broken off the front teeth right so the model broke before i got the acrylic off so that's the issue we're having. The model has no give to it. When you go to separate this, your acrylic's going to break before 
the model will. So that causes the problems of cracking. So the problems are cracking of acrylic during during removal so that's the issue is is the breaking of the acrylic models 3D printed has no give meaning it will it will acrylic will break before the um, a model will so and also even you know trying to get a knife up under the acrylic to separate it you know usually you can dig the knife into the stone and get up underneath it to release it this one you've actually got to bend the acrylic a little bit to get it off of the model why do you make that loop at the end of your labial bow? Oh, this loop right here. Uh, this is just, a, if you're talking about this one, uh, LeBron James. This, you can make, you can do zigzags, you can do whatever you want. It, it doesn't matter. It's just acrylic retention, so the wire doesn't pull out of the acrylic. So, you do not have any chemical retention to hold the wire in. You've got to have mechanical retention. So I've put little loops at the end and you can personalize it. You can make it your own. You can make it um, for your lab. So I can recognize that when I get a retainer in and it has these loops in there, that's my retainer. Or if you do zigzags, make it your own. So they're acrylic anchors is what I call them. I've also heard them called acrylic tags. So if you look at Steve Zara's channel, he does zigzags. Um, some people do perfect loops. I do like a little teardrop sign. Uh, so it's just lab preference, technician preference. Follow whatever uh, you want to do. I have one here uh, from a lab I used to work at. And you can see they did a little L shape in their wires. Hopefully you can see that. And they their atoms point it toward each other. And I do loops on my atoms now. So this will actually, whenever this comes back, I knew which lab this came from by the acrylic tags that are in there. It's your signature. Yeah, Frank. Yeah, perfect. It's, it's hey, Frank. <laughs> How are you doing? Hello from Syria also. I can't read that name. It's not coming up right. Uh, anyway, it's your signature. It, it Come up with one that you can recognize as your wire bending. Um, and even within that lab I worked at, you could tell by the size of the loops, by everything, you know, who bent the wire. It, it's, it's your signature. It, that's the best way of putting it. But it, its main function is retention in the acrylic. So when you're going and pushing and pulling on it, it won't come out it's locked in so I've made a circle and filled it in with acrylic all the way around and it's locked in it won't come out because it, this has me mechanical retention so that being said retention on the 3d printed models a different story you run into having to uh, make sure your separator is fully covered um, the separator I use, you got to put two layers worth. Um, so that's the problem. Let me get back to this. That's the problem is the cracking of the acrylic. And with labial acrylic, labial and palatal, I'm, I'm a terrible spiller, uh, working against each other so not only you got to deal with trying to take this out of the palette you got to deal with trying to take it off the facial so solution that's why you've tuned into this this is my solution it's it won't work in every single case depending on your printer the resin you use the acrylic you use the separator you use it's just here's another 
arrow for your quiver so you, if something doesn't work try this if this doesn't work come up with something else and try that so the solution what's my solution more <laughs> wax <laughs> all right so what I'm going so I've already prepped this and I don't know if you can tell let me switch cameras here I don't know if you can tell, but I have put wax in between the teeth here and here and here. I didn't fully fill up the inner inner proximals because uh, I still want that acrylic to wrap around the tooth. Uh, but I put enough to um, so that the acrylic doesn't go deep into the inner proximals and, and cause another mechanical retention where I can't get this off the model. Now, one thing I do like to do, and I've, I've kept it for this occasion it's like to bridge this remember I'm going four to four so this is like the worst case scenario of 3d printed model four to four labial bow four to four acrylic so I'd like to bridge this because this embrasure this area right here is so such a valley that whatever color I, I put on the inside here will spill over into my labial acrylic area Especially when you're using colored monomers and stuff, it stains like crazy. So I, I'm waxing up a little bridge, a little dam, to keep this acrylic separate from this acrylic. If they bond together, it's even harder to get off. So I'm going to wax this on. So I've already bent the wires. I've already waxed the clasp. These clasps are actually. Um, what are these clasps called? Finger clasps. They're like ball clasp without the ball. So I, I feel like I gotta adjust this a little bit. Now these models are extra models I printed. Um, uh, this one had a weird crack here that I didn't fully trust in the name. Printed sideways like it was uh, oriented weird in the computer so it put the name in sideways so you see in the the bottom of the letters right there there's another whole nother issue we have to deal with as lab techs in the new generation so my solution to more wax begins here when I add my sticky wax to the labial bow that adjustment loop not only do I tack it on the sides I go up and cover most of the top of the loop and you're gonna see when I go to separate this I'm gonna slide my knife underneath that uh, wax and cause separation of the acrylic now I'm gonna try to separate one of these live on camera you know how I like to do things live on camera and and we'll just all see how it totally fails uh, it's fun. It's exciting. You know, everybody likes to see the the fails on video, fails on Facebook and stuff. I'm just one of them. I'm just one of the guys. No fancy editing here. That labial bow is not exactly straight, but again, this is not a real case. I'm not going to spend my time straightening the labial bow. Yeah, either. It's not straight, or I printed it. Oh, it's decently straight. I like to drop that down a little bit. There you go. Okay. So next step, more wax. So I've I've waxed in between the teeth. Make sure you wax under the rugae too. Remember this, these. 3D printed models don't give if you've got a little lock under there it's like having a ledge you can't get it out from underneath but Balehem going to study oh sorry let me get the thing I went to the end of the chat so going on more wax let me show you something I use utility wax. Now you've seen me use this before on um, uh, separating teeth or uh, 
uh, resetting teeth, I like to use this utility wax, which I get from JVC and Company. There's the number if you need it. It's probably backwards. There we go. <laughs> anyway, uh, I use that. Have you seen it in other videos? So I use a lot of it all the time. But let me show you this. I'm going to move my camera real quick. Here is my light, my main light that I use. And this is the utility wax. I like to cut little strips of it, little sections of it, and I put it on my light. And it gets it just tacky enough where it's m more malleable for me, especially when it's cool weather right now. We're having November. Uh, it, it, it's just the right amount of tackiness in this light. It, and I'm using a fluorescent light. I'm not using or an LED light under here. Uh, if you use incandescent, it may get too hot, so just be careful. You might have to put it on the edge. But I, I, I don't know where I came up with this, but that's what I like to do. All right, let's see if I can get this back to where you can see all the notes. All right, live on camera. Awesome. All right, so... I'm going to take a strip of that that's on this lamp up here, which is that utility wax, which I got out of this box right here. And <laughs> it's a very simple trick. I make a wax dam. So many of you might be familiar with doing stuff like this if you're from the dentures. Uh, like when you do reed lines or All right, so I'm having I internet issues. Hopefully you are getting this. I'm recording it, so if it does go out, uh, we should be good. I'll, I'll upload the recording of this. So again, I'm just sealing this. This I'm, I'm taking my time here, but this shouldn't take too long. It's about the same amount of time. Either you're gonna spend the time uh, trimming all this excess uh, acrylic off or you're going to spend the time waxing it so if you're worried about it taking too much time it to me it's the same difference you're just passing the time off to the next guy if you leave it so what I'm what am I talking about on that it, it's let me finish I can't do two things at once I guess I'm in the wrong YouTube business if I can't work with my hands and talk at the same time. All right, so I got this about where I want it. So what does this prevent? This prevents acrylic. See this acrylic right here? It's, see how it's sticking? Now, one of the problems I ran into is I didn't wax enough here. So it was just covered with acrylic, and I, I was trying to dislodge it here, and I just couldn't get it off. See how it just flexes ever so slightly? I couldn't get my knife underneath there to take this off. And uh, so I've, my first step was I put more sticky wax here, which helped. But then if I didn't cut this with my X-Acto knife very cleanly and very smoothly, it was still attached all the way up here. So I was trying to pull this whole block of acrylic off and I was having issues. So I've made a wax dam. And you can spend time trying to get I know I'm going to trim this anyway so I just trying to get most of it filled in where I don't have to trim it and there we go so more wax in the interproximals remember the rugae and wax damn on labial now I guess you could if you wanted to take the time you could run a bead of wax in the palatal and do it that way but I think we're we're good here so let's get to acrylicing let me put up all my stuff here get out my other stuff got my paper towel now uh, if y'all are joining from the Patreon account, I did all the prep work and I did one already 
just to test it out in my Patreon account. So if you're interested, uh, if you're a Patreon subscriber, check my Patreon account and the prep for these models will be there and uh, the decision on the colors I'm going to use for these are on there. So uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. All right, sorry if the, oh, seems to be the digital revolution is a nightmare for the laboratory side of the very well said it, Samuel Douglas. We are um, having to deal with this. So we're trying to, the great thing about lab technicians is we can come up with anything. We can almost fix anything. Just give us some time. And this has come on so quickly. Some of us don't have time. So I'm sharing my ideas of, maybe a possible solution to a possible problem so hopefully you'll take this run with it come up with your own and then share it with the community because uh, this has come on quick and and it's disrupting the way we do our acrylic and so much so that even people are adding an extra step of duplicating I'm trying to get rid of that I don't want to duplicate I'm not focusing on the right thing Okay, sorry about that. Okay, I'll stop this real quick. I'm getting a lot of alerts for, let's see, project settings. I'm going to lower the output bit rate, save. All right, now maybe it'll let me do it. Sorry if uh, you're getting bad internet connection. It's my end, not your end. All right, so one thing I've noticed uh, when I'm sprinkling on 3D printed models is that the um, I use too much monomer. Now, why is that? Well, when I was using stone models, the stone models soak up just a little bit of monomer. Uh, especially if you didn't use separator. It, that was one clue that you didn't use separator was you just watch that monomer get soaked up into the stone or plaster of the of the uh, dental model and then you know you know it's it, you didn't use separator. But back to my point is <clears throat> what I didn't anticipate was my acrylic being so runny because I'm just out of habit use a little bit too much monomer to compensate for what gets soaked up by the stone but this model these 3d printed models do not get soaked up by the stone so uh, I, I've got to that another one of those digital revolution things is you gotta get used to it so um, let's see if I can do this I've got this little tool here I got from JBC it's acrylic um, manipulating tool. Yeah, actually, I actually think it's for clay, but this works perfect. So I'm going to place it tip on the wax and I'm going to scrape the excess off the wax. I'm just cleaning off the wax. So you should see a nice line of demarcation between the wax and the acrylic. Now you got to watch your angle and you gotta watch because you've removed the extra polymer that's soaking up that extra monomer so it will actually start to run on you because you've removed some of the polymer that the monomer needs to help set up so oh that just popped right on my hand that's one thing I've also had to deal with was uh, putting a nice base on here for a handle I didn't even think about that <laughs> when I'm when you're you're trying to save resin while you're printing so you try to print it short but then you lose grip and it's hard to work on alright so I'm gonna leave that for right now we're gonna watch it and then let's just sprinkle the inside now I like to put just a little bit of acrylic on the underneath the wires and I'm gonna use yellow pearl sparkle polymer nobody ever orders this so we're gonna see why uh, one fun thing about this form 2 resin is that it 
really makes colors pop. So as you're doing these colored, brightly colored uh, retainers, especially on the, and you saw, one difference was that gray model that's in the thumbnail of this video, uh, it, it kind of blends in with the gray, which was I always, I took a picture because I thought it was funny how it blended in so well, but any other colors really pop out. It's really fun. So this is a pearl, yellow pearl sparkle from JBC and Company. Now remember, you've got to keep an eye on your label acrylic. Yeah, it might run on you. All right, we're good. I had to just take a glance. Sometimes, it, especially when it's cold, I just they'll just run all over places. Now I'm gonna put a little clear coat on here. I'm not gonna spend too much time building this up. All right, I'm gonna put some polymer on there to freeze it. I am totally out of the frame here. There we go. Raise this up some, so you can see what I'm doing. All right, label acrylic still looking good. I like to put monomer first under my wires. You know what? Let me just totally move this camera to over here. I shouldn't do this right in the middle of sprinkling or shooting acrylic. That side, I need to freeze it some more. Again, it was very important me for me to find a system for pouring acrylic, applying acrylic directly on a 3D printed model. And so that's why I went with Form 2 and the gray resin. Um, you know, I know Stratasys, uh, I think it has a really good resin. Uh, Stratasys printer, the object printers, have a really good resin for uh, good separation. But it's a, you know, they're their baseline is a forty thousand dollar printer and the form two is a thirty two hundred dollar you know printer so it was an easy decision for me it uh it was nice researching being able to research what other labs are using and that's why I'm one reason I'm producing this video so if another lab's having an issue with labial acrylic and just in general acrylic separation uh maybe they can get some tips out of this video. All right. All right, we're nearing the end. Okay, I'm gonna freeze it with some polymer. Now here is the important step. Is cutting this with a nice sharp blade. Now I'm gonna wet that blade with my monomer and I'm going to cut on the Incisal, oh, let me clear out. I cut about halfway through that adjustment loop. Both sides. And I go all the way down. I try to actually score the model some. I want to make sure I totally clear that out. I don't want any thin film of acrylic still sticking to the model, which is just going to make it harder and harder to separate. If you wait long enough, it just peels right off. But you got to make sure you cut it enough. Oh, I need to freeze the inside. See how that glossy? That's your enemy. Yeah, freeze that. Make sure it doesn't. So I'm not going to cut on the gingival side of the labial acrylic because this uh, wax dam is doing it for me. 
I don't have to do that. Now I am going to cut on the palatal side. Again, this just helps aid in, well, it reduces trimming time. If you can remove as much acrylic as possible during this wet acrylic stage, you don't have to trim as much. I use my little scoop again. And sometimes, so you want to make sure you got a nice clean line right here. And that's all about getting a nice sharp knife and cutting to separate. Now I'm going to add a little bit of a monomer here. I'm, one of the things about cutting it when it's wet is you have a tendency to pull it off of the model. So I'm going to wet it and I'm going to pat the acrylic back down. I'm actually going to contour it to the roof of the mouth and just totally make sure it's everywhere we need it to be. And freeze it again, pat it down. Okay, let's take a look at this label acrylic. It's starting to set up. I see some bubbles in there, so I need to get it in the pressure pot pretty quick. But another tip is to put your separator, you know, if, if it calls for one coat of separator, your separator company, uh, or two coats, you know, at least put one coat on the occlusion, and that, that'll help. And also make sure this acrylic doesn't connect to this acrylic. That will also help. And separating this out especially with labial acrylic so I'm going to remove just a little bit again not a pretty job but you'll get the job done so let's go put it in the pressure pot okay I got the pressure pot here and release the pressure now I already have one done so this is like a baking show you put one in the oven and you can take one out. But first I'm going to get a little green bowl because another tip of separating this is keeping it wet or being able to dunk it. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Let me get my favorite knives. Which I don't know where they're at. Where'd my wife put them? right here by the camera <laughs> all right so let me uh hello i'm from indonesia hello everybody hello san dental lab nice to see you all right so i'm gonna grab that one that was already in the pressure pot like i said it's like one of those american baking shows and let me grab a little bit of this warm water with the bowl since and there we go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get a towel here. It's kind of a messy business. So clean up as I go. All right, so let me get another good angle. Change my angle here. Okay, let me get my knife. I got two different knives. Ow. I like using these knives that have a nice, this angle of a tip. There are other knives that have a more of a recurve tip to them and here's a flask knife in my previous video I showed you I got this off of Amazon I have the link in the description below if you're interested in in it uh, I think I might have one of these knives too so anyway here's the moment of truth you can actually see the wax is a different color I like to remove this wax while it's in this state so it's easier to remove and I'm being as rough as possible as you you might have seen it it may have it's already separated so that's good so 
I'm going to go ahead and remove as much wax as possible. And I'll dunk it back in the water. Uh, the instruction of the separator is to try and, you know, oh, did you see that? You'll see it shoot through here. It's almost like you cracked it. And that's, see how that turned white? And now I, I'll grab it with my fingers and I'm going to pull on it and see if it will not yet. It's not ready. Remember, I've got to turn this corner. That's what makes this label acrylic hard is it's such a, an arch. If it was more from here to here, it would be easier to take off. But one other trick I do is I'll do it in the water. So you see, I haven't even tried the palatal side yet got that there we go so now it's movable and it looks like I didn't crack it see how it's moving here see how important it was to wax out most of that loop now I need to take out that wax this sticky wax actually does a really good job on this um, labial acrylic this is fern green polymer by the way so what you gotta do the same thing you got to Dig your knife up underneath it the best you can, and you'll hear it crack. That's usually that sound, even though it. Oh man, it, this makes me. This part makes me sweat. <laughs> even though that part is um, scary, that sound, that cracking sound, it's actually separating. It's so well formed to the palatal surface that it actually. I'm gonna dunk it in the water again warm this warm water and I think the water putting the water in here I'm gonna change my angle here maybe get a better angle putting the water in here I think it helps with capillary action so it's almost like a suction to me in my mind so once I break the suction water will get in there and separate the rest of it so I just got to initially break that suction there we go Get that knife. There we go. Please be careful with the knife. And there it is. Nice, clean on the tissue side. Nice, clean separation here. All right. So what I'm going to do is bear with me. Might want to turn the volume down. I'm going to go steam this off and remove the wax so we can get a good look at it. All right, watch your ears. Okay, so get my live camera here, see if I can get a good video shot of this. So this is what came out. You can see, hopefully, the line, there we go nice reflection you can see the nice smooth line we made with the acrylic dam or the, the wax dam and so there's not much left to trim if you kept it you know fairly minimum and it it's already contoured because we put the wax on there and contoured it uh, and then we scraped it with that little scraper before we moved to sprinkling the palette. It actually contoured it a little bit to the angle of the teeth. I've been using a strip of hot glue lately instead of rope wax, less to steam off. 
Zachary, you are a genius. Man, I wish I could shake your hand. That is... Look at that. Zachary, I've been using a strip of hot glue lately instead of rope wax. Let's to steam off afterwards. That is genius. I like the way you think. See, that's why we make these videos. I like that. So you can just keep a hot glue gun going and just hot glue right here. I used to use hot glue when I did uh, night guards. And I bet that thing just peels right off. I'm going to try that next time. I'm going to get a good hot glue gun and I'm going to try that. That is a great idea, Zachary. Good. I'm glad you put that. If anybody else has any ideas, please put them in the comments below. Um, so let let me uh, put this other one in the water. Now, you notice I put it in the cup. I put it in the cup just out of habit. I don't think you need to put it. use the steam method with these. You can actually just go straight into the water because there's no bubbles coming out of the 3d printed model so you don't have to worry about that so I'm gonna let this cure I'll answer some more questions and then I will separate that last one that we just put in there I know it's probably not gonna be enough time uh, but we'll see if we can get a good separation on there uh, does anybody have any uh, tips about how long you wait I, I usually put it in the pressure pot for about 10 minutes. This won't be 10 minutes when I try to separate this, but um, I think it'll be close enough. So, for those of us that are joining, let me do a review of what we did. Alright, so I use a... This is... Every lab is different. So, I use a Form 2. I use Form Gray Resin. The separator is of your choice. Just make sure you follow the instructions. And I'm sure the separator, depending on your resin, it all depends. Um, uh, the reason I'm doing this is I have an issue because the doctor wants a 4 to 4 labial bow with 4 to 4 or bicuspid to bicuspid labial acrylic, as you can see here. Here's one that's unfinished. Oh, this is actually the lower. Here's the upper. So they actually like four to four labial bow with four to four acrylic because they really want to encircle the, each tooth both on the inside acrylic and outside so instead of a, a wire touching a single point on the tooth and retaining it you got a whole acrylic so I can see the benefits of using this but once I move to um, 3d printed models I had an issue and it was the cracking of the acrylic because this is such a long span, because it's such a long span, when I go to do one side, this side still sticks. And because the other problems of, they have models, 3D printed models, they have no give. Meaning, when you go to separate, like on a stone cast, the teeth will break off before your retainer does. On this labial acrylic. It won't do it on this. Your label acrylic is going to crack before these teeth break. Same thing on the inside. And then also the problem of it working against each other. Because of this long span, I would try to work on one side and then try to work on another. And then try to work on... So it was like three points of attack that it was working against each other to try to get this off. And again, you, you have the issue of just having problems with regular acrylic coming off anyway so this is what I came up with was a wax dam and you can rewind the video but I placed a rope wax and Zachary has a great idea oh hello Daniello from Serbia nice for you to join us I placed a wax right here and so then I would sprinkle up against it and y'all saw that just now and uh, so that is my solution is more wax or hot glue let me write that down. Zachary, you, you have made the notes. Or hot glue. I've also used the hot glue to form the horseshoe of the palette of acrylic. It's easier to get the knife between acrylic and 3D resin for separation. Yes, you've read my mind. I actually was just saying use a rope wax 
right along where you're going to sprinkle. But if you use hot glue, that's even better. Because then, the, as y'all saw, and I'll, I'll show again, it's hard to get that knife up underneath that. And if you twerk it, twerk it. Oh my gosh, I just used the word twerk. I just used the word twerk. <laughs> if you twerk it <laughs> enough, you will break the acrylic and or crack it. So uh, that that's a great idea. Or hot glue. Um, and of course, you know, you need to wax out the rugue and wax uh, wax bridges on the labial bow area so that see this was turquoise. Turquoise, if you know, stains like crazy a, a regular model and I don't want to it to spill over onto the labial bow. Now I do sprinkle the labial bow first. I'm sure everybody else does. That's how I was raised. Um, just so it's a nice clean uh, acrylic if you do the turquoise first and you get it on the other side you gotta clean it off or else you're gonna have a turquoise labial bow and if you sprinkle labial bow thick enough you can just trim off the excess so uh, see I learned something new also that's why I do this that's what Steve and I were talking about that the other day we've learned so much stuff in fact he has a tips video he's learned from other people that he's learned from even though he's pr producing a video every Tuesday at noon it's a shameless plug for him uh, oh, man this is all over the place <laughs> he's got a I even made his tip list which is great I think it was uh, putting monomer on your knife tip before you cut and get a nice clean cut in your acrylic so let me get that out of the pressure pot. Hopefully it's set up enough I can separate it and we can show it one more time. If it cracks, hey, live broadcast, that's what happens. So let's pull this out of the pressure pot right here. This is a Great Lakes pressure pot, AV, JV. You, uh, one of my patrons asked what pressure pot I was using. And it's from Great Lakes. You can look it up, greatlakesortho.com. So here's my model. You can see it. the wax changes colors, gets more uh, opaque looking. But yeah, it looks pretty set up. I'm going to grab some more water out of here. Just because I like separating under water. So I would actually separate this in the pressure pot as much as I could. Because I think there is a... And I could be completely wrong, but I think there's a suction going on that be it between the acrylic and the... Uh, there's a chemical um, retention, there's mechanical retention, I think there's like a suction retention. And so the water, I think, helps relieve the suction. If you ever try to pull off a uh, an impression of someone's mouth and you, you can't get it out if you're an assistant and you got to stick your finger in their mouth and, and try to hook one side and try to get it to pull in air from one side you know it's kind of like a suction cup if you lift one side it, it rushes in there I think the water helps that and when you pour up that impression sometimes when you're having a hard time and it's producing some suction it's good to run some water in there and then through capillary action that water runs in there into that suction area and, and helps pull it apart helps to separate it. Son Dental Lab, you're welcome for the video. I'm glad it helps. Uh, hopefully the recording is bad. I'm going to watch it again after this and I'd say my internet's down so I don't know. So let's separate this and we'll end the video. I am recording this so if it's bad I'll upload a new video from the pure recording. So I first thing I do is I re remove all of the wax starting with the sticky wax and then I like to take this tip of this knife and just run it right up and be as rough as I can because you remember you're not gonna hurt the acrylic with the knife well I mean if you crack it but scratching it wise you're not gonna hurt it you're not gonna hurt the model so usually you can dig you know on the back you can dig into the model to get underneath it to release it but on these you you can't dig into the model with these knives I 
All right, I'm going to soak that for a second. And you're going to see the separation happen. So I'm going to slide my knife under my labial bow here. And watch right here. You'll see it. You'll see it give. It didn't do it very good then. Not there either. But it separated pretty nicely. So let's try that on the back side. There we go. See, I got my knife under there. And to torque it, you don't want to twist too much. So just go ahead and just break that seal on that side. Break the seal on this side. See, I can't get underneath it. Now, if I had that hot glue <laughs> or that wax on the border of this, that would work. How to release, poros release porosity on pressure pot. Let's see. I'm going to do a video on one of my Patreons asked that. Oh, here we go. See how I just totally gave out. You can see what it's going to look like when we're done polishing it. It's going to look, that's that pearl. So, let me go steam this real quick. And uh, if I was using hot glue, Zachary, I didn't have, to, I don't have to steam it as much. <laughs> so, kudos to you. So, turn down y'all's volumes. I'm about to hit the steamer real quick. Okay, and there we go. There are here are the two retainers we did. Again, if you missed this one, it, I did this and prepped them in my Patreon account. Uh, so those that are Patreon subscribers or supporters, first off, thank you. Uh, second off, uh, check your feed. I did the prepping in the the wax prepping for this thing. Yeah, in your feed. And then put it in the pressure pot. And then for the this wire Wednesday, I did this. But you can see that if I can get the right reflection on here, you can see where that wax was nice and smooth. And so trimming is going to be a breeze on these. So I'm going to get these trimmed. And it is now officially an hour. And I'm going to call an end to the live stream. Thank you. Oh, San Dental, how to release porosity on pressure pot. I don't know if you mean pressure, but the pressure pot removes the porosity if you get it into pressure pot in time. Um, th now, this one may have porosity because I took too long sprinkling it. You can kind of see some frostiness here, but I think it might trim out because if I look through here, it actually looks pretty good. But um, if you want to see how I released the pressure pot, uh, it was this has. I'm going to do a video on the pressure pot, but so this is a preview. Um, here is the pressure going in. I have a regulator. This is on. So I line up my marks here, close it down, do the latch turn this on and it pressurizes and so then when I unpressurize I turn it that way part of it releases out of there but I have a release button here then slide the lock back and I can open it you get pretty fast it's kind of complicated at first but you get pretty fast at it So with that being said, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you for watching. If you have any more questions, uh, and ask them below. And Zachary will answer them because he's got better better questions. So thank you all for your, uh, your tips and tricks that you're going to put below. Zachary, thank you for yours. That was great. Uh, and thank you for joining me from Brazil and Portugal, Italy, wherever else, uh, France. Um, uh, thank y'all here in the states tomorrow is thanksgiving so happy thanksgiving to everybody who's watching in the states and until then uh 
be sure and subscribe if you like these types of videos and that will make me do more if you're interested in learning more I do live recordings of all my videos on my patreon account so you can join me over there and uh, put in your request for videos there and join me as I actually record the videos so um, things like knives and my live streaming setup I have a link down below in the description below for my Amazon page you can click there and see the list of everything I order on Amazon that I use in my lab so if you're looking for things for your lab uh, or office or whatever or if you want to do a live streaming thing like this then check down below and if when you click there uh, and order something it I get a little bit of money back help support the channel so thank you again below the video you might see some t-shirts uh, I'm wearing a this is not one of them you can get I got this from one of my doctors who does a food drive every year during Thanksgiving so this is live thankfully um, check out his Facebook page Mallory orthodontics in Decatur Texas and you might still be able to order some of these I think they're doing the food drive right now but um, but you can see my t-shirts retainer designer t-shirts down below you can order one I think they're like 20 30 bucks so anyway I'm gonna sign off have a good day have a happy Thanksgiving and happy bending <laughs>